Hey guys, welcome to another day on the shop. Today, as you see, Camaro's back in here. So if you're not familiar with my 1980 uh, Z28 Camaro, this is a, uh, yeah, it's a 1980 Z28 Camaro. It uh, is has been built for the strip in a way. Uh, right now, it uh, it's empty, but it does have a 350 with a cam and a 350 CFM carb. Uh, it has been rebuilt. We're about to slap it back in. Um, the only thing I gotta do is I have one freeze plug that has to go back in here. And once we lift it up, we'll pop that in. But it's got a 400, uh, turbo 400 in it with uh, a shift kit. It's got a three. 3500 stall um, yeah torque converter uh, it has some slapper bars on it but they're up on the shelf up there I'll have to get them later uh, we put some uh, 15 by 10 uh, Jegs wheels on the back the super eights uh, those tires aren't the greatest so it really doesn't matter they're irrelevant uh, we do have the old school air shocks on it which one day we'll get rid of uh last year put new door panels in and uh yeah we started getting things together in here and shined up this put some gauges in had it on the road for just long enough to go get it registered uh because it's a louisiana mississippi uh tag on it and now i have my antique tag so but we're gonna get into this before i started dabbling a little bit i have a new fuel system for it well say fuel system it's coming from the hard line up in the engine bay we're starting right here and we're going an fittings and an line just for cosmetic uh so i got me a filter got me some line and some fittings and some jags i got me a little carb kit so this thing's not the it, sinister looking on the outside it's not pretty at all I love it. Uh, rusted hood and all. Makes it look like it just came out of a field, which it did. Check back in my videos. We got it running uh, about two years ago uh, after it sat in the field for about 10 to 15 years. Uh, we had to replace the whole fuel system and everything else. So that's that. But what I'm looking at, like I said, is the fuel system. So I've been piddling. I've got my fuel filter right here. Uh, if you've ever messed with rib nuts or anything else, I wanted to put it right here So I drilled a hole out and uh, well, I drilled a hole that was already there and made it bigger and then uh, So I've got a rib nut in it and now I've got this hole set up which is going to come in here and bolt right there and this little 90 will go to the side there and uh might even do a 120 I'm not or a 180 I'm not sure I got the 90 right here fuel line has to go around and back in about here where the fuel pump is so we're still looking at that and I've got some uh, issues where I don't want but this is the end of my uh, or the outlet to my fuel pump and as you see somebody cut it and everything else so we're just going to do a old, little old school trick of making it pretty um, because I don't feel like ordering a whole AN kit for that. But regular stock fuel pump because we're not pushing 500 horsepower. We might get 300, maybe 350 out of it. Who knows? And yeah, so we're just going to get this thing back together. It's kind of a a restore slash uh, I don't really care project uh, I just want it on the road so yeah we're gonna get into this fuel system we're gonna cut a couple things we gotta cut that hard line back a little bit further we gotta put a uh, crimp fitting on it uh, or pressure crimp fitting however you say I can't remember but we gotta put one of those on it I've got a handful of things in here this little baggy that uh, I lost it there it is all right, you got the brass little fitting on it, uh, and then you got that whole part that is AN. So, 
going with 6AN uh, all the way up and this filter is a hundred micron so yeah, yeah. Most, I mostly know what I ta I'm talking about but not really I just read so like I said we got the rib nut in now we got to cut that line and start making an AN line so let's make one of my first AN lines I've ever made All right, well, looking at this, I'm gonna shorten this line just by a hair because this thing's pushing this out and I don't like that, I'd rather pull it in. So we're gonna back all this out and then we're gonna pull this fitting off and hopefully be able to cut and recrimp or reinstall the line by just a hair. All right, so we remade the line, so the hair's shorter. So let's see how it goes. Alright, so I think that's better. It could be a little bit shorter, but it is what it is. I'm liking this line. This is uh, Evil Energy off of Amazon. Uh, yeah, as I'm putting these together, the, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, flats are coming together. That's where it stops. So they made them pretty decent. This line is pretty good too. I really like it. Uh, it's not the most expensive stuff in the world, but everyone that's uh, I've read that have used it, likes it a lot uh, I got a lot of stuff from them uh, they're adjustable wrenches and quite a few other little products uh, as of the whole fuel system for this well not I keep saying fuel system it's not the whole fuel system it's the fuel line and adapters so since we did that we're gonna look at this 90 we can't finish it but this 90 will go on here like that these transmission lines will come up like that and this 90 should push the line right there and it should loop through right there and this has a rubber piece under it to keep it from vibrating as much that's pretty taut so it should be pretty good so we're getting there with that uh, I've heard complaints about the carb uh, line because see as that one is this one's old school where it has a little rinky dink looking like AN fittings. Uh, can't really say anything because I'm gonna have the same thing. But this is made a little bit long, so it's not gonna be a straight shot. That's okay. It can loop down and you don't have an issue. So we can pop these off and uh, put this on. And it also has another, uh, what is that, T right there has one with a uh, for a gauge and one without and uh, it also has their little logo on their fittings but I'm gonna turn them out because I have no logos so uh, yeah, we'll pop that off real quick do that and uh, that'll be that part until this engine gets dropped in because then I get to do the rest of it and then I get to see if there's leaks but I'm really enjoying how that looks it's pretty fancified my 
if I'd say so myself. So I'm gonna take this fitting back off right now because I gotta snug everything up anyway once I get this done. But let's slap this uh, Jegs piece on and uh, see how that works. All right, so a lot about putting this thing on. Uh, the fittings right here are uh, too small internally, and these are too large. And then uh, once you take this cap off, it's too large, and it doesn't have an adapter that comes with for that. So I have one more car I'll look at and see if we have the correct uh, one. If we don't, well, I guess we gotta order a new adapter for the carb. So let's look for that. Well, as of right now, this uh, this is gonna be how the carb's gonna be because uh, I don't have an adapter for that, and the other carb doesn't uh, has the same size fittings. So uh, worst comes to worst, we can change this line out. But I'm gonna go ahead and look at ordering the adapters for this to that carb. If it doesn't work, then we'll get rid of this. Or, uh, yeah, we just gotta do what we gotta do. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's get to something else. All right, well, got it on the engine hoist, but I'm not gonna have a lot of commentary in this because uh, it sounds like a hurricane outside. And uh, we're just gonna install this engine. So, whew, we got trees are blowing, rain, sunshine, wind gotta love the south so yeah let's install this engine all right so it's a new day we got the engine set on its engine mounts and a bolt through both sides right now holding it up uh the transmission is not mounted in yet well, excuse me the transmission's not mounted to the block yet got the headers in uh because this is the easiest way to get the exhaust headers in everything's covered up got to take this off and we get to start hooking things up so i'm not going to go through and show you each and everything because this would be like the fourth time i've done a video on pulling or installing this engine and so if you want to look at that you can look at the playlist and you can find installation of a uh, chevy 350 in a 1980 camaro uh so yeah we've got to get uh everything hooked up now I'm going to pop all this off. You'll see that, and we'll get to the next part. So let's do that. I have to lift this car up a little bit, but we got the transmission starting to be attached. Got a couple bolts back there. Started doing the, uh, um, started doing the torque converter. Uh, so now we got that. We're running into a little issue. Uh, I got to figure out why I can't turn the engine over anymore, and I'm having a feeling it's because of the um torque converter that's possibly hitting the uh housing to the transmission or something like that or there's something caught somewhere i got to get down there and check but other than that uh we got fluid in it uh got some oil in the places it needed to get just because i know it needed it and now uh yeah we're going to finish tightening this transmission up and once we finish tightening the transmission up we're going to finish uh i just got to snug down the torque converter bolts one more time uh and then we'll start getting the headers on exhaust mounted up and wires distributor carb accessories and the radiator and we'll be good we're getting there shouldn't be much longer could be today, hopefully. I want to see this thing cranked up and running. Uh, tight tolerances, so oh, whenever I rebuilt this, everything was right on the spec, so it's kind of tight. Uh, compared to when I took apart, which was extremely loose, it worked. It's a 70s 350, 80s 350. So uh, yeah, tolerances can be very loose. Well, we'll figure that out. Uh, but yeah, let me get back to this. So, uh, see you in a second. 
No, today's a new day. Went and got my workout on. Fitness is key. There's a part of the south that I don't like whenever it comes to like winter time. Because when it's cool outside, we have so much moisture in the air. Everything is wet. This is inside my shop. It has not rained in two days. And water just sticks around like this because of the humidity and the fluids in the air. So we got a lot of stuff done the other day. We got the engine bolted all the way up. I probably already told y'all that. We got the headers on. We got the exhaust hooked up. We got the plugs in. We got the torque converter hooked up. I am missing a bolt. I've got to find one, one transmission bolt. Uh, and it's in the pile of all my other bolts over here. I always like to label things, but somehow, some way, one of the bolts got misplaced. So, got my ground hooked up here. Uh, and now I just got to start moving all this around to be hooked up correctly. Uh, one of the next things is I need to get the distributor out and make sure I'm on point with where I need to be on the uh, um, crank and then go from there to uh, getting all the accessories and the carb and the radiator. I made a list right here, but I mean, it's, it's the normal stuff. So this is basically, it's not in any sort of order, just knock it out. So uh, the easiest one would probably be the distributor right now, just because everything's off of it and it's the easiest to get to. Uh, and then when it comes down to getting um, the tune right, the timing, uh, it sucks because you got to reach back there. It's not too bad. Ford's a little bit easier because the distributor's up here. Chevy, it's got to be the opposite, so it's back there. And uh, yeah, so we got water temperature sensor, uh, old water temperature sensor that doesn't hook up to anything. Uh, we had a sensor right here that doesn't hook up to anything. So that's good. Good thing about old Chevys. Uh, distributor, distributor, and then other things. So we're going to try and knock this out as quick as possible. Like I said, I don't like sitting there doing uh, time lapse after time lapse after time lapse. And me doing the same exact thing every time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try and do some of this and get this knocked out. So uh, we're going to see some B-roll, I guess, and that's going to be about it. We're going to get this thing knocked out. So let's do it. done it's in there it's not started yet but uh we got water we got oil we're about to get some fuel just dumped uh, about four or five gallons in the tank uh everything is lined up the distributor is uh loose right now so uh that's all good all the hookups are hooked up minus my electric choke uh, i'm not too worried about that Look at this power wire down here there we go for the starter all right I think everything is good to go. We're gonna start turning it over and uh, try and get some fuel through the fuel pump, check for leaks, and then we're gonna put some fuel in the carb and uh, go from there. So let's check this. Well, got good news and bad news. So we've got this thing to where it'll crank. I'll show y'all real quick. Got gas, 
dump it in here a little bit. That's a lot of it, but we'll make do. Got my starter button right here. One more time. All right, so it runs. Negative part. I have my lines backwards. So my fuel lines are just backwards. So I've just got vacuum instead of uh, pressure coming out of the line that goes to the carb. And so we'll swap that around. Uh, everything else looks and sounds pretty good. I have a little bit of valve clack because uh, I've got to tighten down the rocker arms. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're doing good. We got everything going. So I'm gonna swap these lines around and hopefully We'll crank this thing and have it running and I won't have to deal with the fuel lines again and just tighten down the valves. So let's get to that. Well, we have good news and bad news. So the good news is it's in, it runs, it cranks, it sounds decent. I'm still working on the tune a little bit. The idle's kind of wonky and uh, I had to work with the carburetor because I had my float needle sticking and uh, now it's not. So. My issue now, which really sucks because this is the main reason why I really took this engine out in the first place, is I don't know if you can see down in the depths of there, there's oil on a piece of cardboard from my rear main seal that I just replaced. So I've read up a lot of people have issues with the two piece main two-piece rear main seals uh, that they can't figure out the good combination to make it not leak. Well, mine's not like just a drip every now and again. It's once the car gets going, you give it some gas, the oil gets warmed up, it just starts steadily dripping. So, I don't know if the pressure's wrong on the uh, gasket itself, if there's too much uh, RTV, or if... Uh, it's not tight enough or the surface wasn't clean enough whenever I installed it all. Um, so in the nightmare of that, I get to uh, pull the pan off and look at it and possibly buy a new gasket and put it on there. But while you sit here and listen to me whine and cry about that, let's start it. So. Simple start, easy start. Sounds good. Dolls down there. Sounds good. Burn some stuff out. Got a bunch of nastiness down there. All the gauges are looking good in here. So, yeah. But, like I said, that down there is a uh, leaking rear main seal. So, I'm sad. So, I'm going to get on this and fix it and hopefully be done with my leaks on here and uh, get away from all this leaky, crappy oil everywhere i'm gonna clean everything up up here because i'm done with most of it put the air cleaner back on finish topping off this and uh yeah we're gonna knock out uh drain the oil popping the pan off uh and going from there if you've seen in my last video about the camaro i did put a new pan and new one piece gasket uh oil pan gasket on there uh to try and prevent this same thing from happening again to make it to where it was not the pan and uh, i don't think it's the pan now so we're going to the rear main seal again um let's do that <sighs> Sucks. Sucks. all right back to it well if you're ever wondering if you can actually change things up underneath an engine in your camaro while it's still in there, it's yes. So, that's how you do it. Pull the bolts for the motor mounts, 
hook up an engine hoist. Uh, everything else is good, it's clearing. Uh, we're kind of pressed up against the firewall with the transmission. It looks like, not the distributor. And then we go up underneath, let's grab a light. And we officially uh, have, uh, ooh, bolts, look at that. We officially uh, have the oil pan dropped out. And that's the gasket. I'm gonna pull this gasket all the way off. We're gonna take a look back here and figure out our issue right here for, uh, if I can get back here, hold on. For our rear main seal up here and see what the issue is. Uh, the front was leaking a little bit too, so I'm gonna put some gasket maker on the front. My, my light's dying. Uh, but we're gonna loosen a couple things and make it work so yeah we'll probably end up dropping the uh oil pump out and getting to this rear uh crank bearing and pulling it out because that's where the rear main seal is checking on it and doing that and hopefully fingers crossed this works and i'll have a running engine that doesn't leak oil everywhere so let's uh let's finish this All right, well, other than the dog barking, I've got good and bad news. Good news, it runs, it doesn't leak like it did. It's kind of in timing. Yeah, I think it's pretty much good. The bad news, it still leaks. I've replaced the rubber gasket with another, another rubber gasket. I've replaced the main seal with another main seal in the rear and it still leaks. And the thing I think it is, is I think I have too much crankcase pressure. Now I did have one cylinder whenever I did a leak down test right after I rebuilt it. And it had a little corrosion on it slash a little rust pitting. Uh, I honed it a little bit. Apparently I didn't hone it enough. Uh, the rings are really good and they are sealing really good on all seven cylinders, except for that one, which is creating a lot of back pressure. Uh, before I rebuilt it, I had no issues with leaks, but my oil pump went out and I should have just replaced the oil pump, put it back together and left it and said, what's done is done. <clears throat> I wanted to rebuild it because I wanted a fresh start. Well, that's ruined it for me because now I have leaks. And uh, yeah, so with those leaks, I got rid of uh, the PCV valve. I put a little catch can in here, as you see here. It is a uh, vacuum to, uh, well, atmospheric, and as well as straight through. It's going to probably make a whistling noise. Uh, I put a little 45 on here that I could find that fit, and uh, it helps. It doesn't leak nearly as much, and that is after I've replaced all the gaskets, torqued them down, RTV'd the living mess out of them to where I don't think there should be any leaks because of all the RTV, but oil's gonna find its way through everything. <clears throat> so, uh, the good news is uh, I think I'm gonna end up with a 383 at some point in the next year. The bad news is, how long is this gonna last before it either catches fire or runs out of oil? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna run it a little bit. I'm not gonna go take it to the track like I want to until these leaks subside. So either they're gonna subside on their own, which is doubtful, uh, or they will uh, disappear due to the fact of another engine, which another engine could mean I just buy a engine that's already a 383, or I take this Vortec that was meant for another project, which is in the corner here, <coughs> which I know runs and is it's okay. Doesn't have a cam, doesn't have aftermarket heads or anything else, but it's okay. I just have to buy an intake for it and then uh, maybe a distributor. So about 200 bucks and 300 bucks. I have another. 350 in it but I don't know
a good question. But I'm gonna throw this down real quick and I'm gonna get it out of my shop because I've got other projects to do. And uh, this is just going to be what it's gonna be for right now until I figure out something different. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna sit here for weeks and weeks and weeks and keep working on this thing. I've got many other projects that are already planned and already ready to go and already have the parts for. So let's get this thing down and let's uh, get it on out of here. So let's do that.